Hello everyone. Welcome to the MXNet Day. My name is Przemysław Trendak and I would like to talk about the history and the future of the runtime compilation, or RTC for short, in MXNet. With the new generations of hardware, we get advancements in both the compute capabilities of the chips as well as the memory bandwidth. When we think about the compute capabilities improvements, uh, we think of, for example, introduction of tensor cores that you can see on the screen. Uh, similarly, uh, memory bandwidth increased with the change from GDDR memory, then to HBM, and then to HBM2 in the recent architectures. However, the compute capabilities uh, increase much faster than the memory bandwidth. Uh, on the chart here, we see three architectures of the GPUs, Pascal, Volta, and Ampere. And as you can see, the compute capabilities from Pascal to Ampere rose over 30 times, whereas the memory bandwidth rose only a few times. This makes the discrepancy between memory bandwidth and the compute l larger as we go to the newer hardware. And historically, that was not really a problem, because when we think about the performance of the deep learning models, we think mostly about the compute-bound operations, like convolutions and fully connected layers, uh, so matrix-matrix multiplications. However, there are actually many operations in deep learning which are memory bandwidth bound. And those are arithmetic ops, such as additions or subtractions. Those are activations like ReLU and Sigmoid. Those are softmax layers. Those are um, normalization layers, such as batch norm and layer norm. They are not the typical first choice for optimization, but they can take a surprisingly high percentage of the total time of deep learning training. Uh, for example, in a pretty optimized ResNet 50 model, which we looked at before the first round of MLPerf benchmark, we see that on a V100, the convolutions take about 60% of the total time, and the remaining 40% is taken by different kinds of memory bound operations, like batch norm, uh, ReLU takes over 10% of the time, addition, gradient summation, and pooling. And as we go to the newer hardware, this chart looks even worse, so to speak. The convolutions get sped up more than the memory bound layers, so the memory bound layers take even higher percentage of the total time. So what can we do in order to get rid of such performance limitations coming from the memory bound op operations? Well, the easiest way to deal with this problem is of course to introduce some custom operations. As one can imagine, the performance limitation of the memory bound operation comes from the memory passes. So loading the data from main memory to registers and then storing it back to GPU memory. Uh, for example, if we take a series of operations, batch norm followed by ReLU, uh, we can see that the batch norm first loads the data from the memory to the registers, performs its computation and then stores data back from registers to main memory. Subsequently, the ReLU layer takes the output of the batch norm, loads it again to registers performs its own computation to then finally store the result to the main memory. So if we could write a custom fused operator, like in this case batch norm ReLU, we could eliminate this intermediate pass from registers to main memory and then back to registers and have the output of the batch norm stay uh, in the registers of the chip, which results in a speed up. However, that is not a silver bullet. What we get with those custom operator, operators is a solution that is very specific and only applicable to some networks. Uh, in our batch norm ReLU example, if we get a new network that does not have a batch norm followed by a ReLU, then we'll just not be able to use our custom operator. What's more, it puts additional burden uh, either on the user who wants to use those custom operators in their network or on the developer to, first of all, create and maintain such fused operator and also a graph pass to then aid the user in actually using it. And unfortunately, typically, actually both of those end up being true because even if a developer maintains the graph pass for the custom operator, then the user still needs to make sure that they write the network in a way that conforms to the assumptions of this pass. Also, if we have a lot of the custom operators, then the size of our library increases which may be an issue for deployment on smaller or more constrained devices. So 
Uh, in MXNet 1.6, we decided to tackle that problem and we introduced a feature called pointwise or elementwise fusion. What it does is, as the name suggests, it tries to automatically fuse the elementwise operations. Let's look at the example of a simple network where we perform a convolutions, then we add the result of the convolution to another input, and then finally we do sigmoid to get the final result. The pointwise fusion graph bus searches first for the elementwise operations, uh, in this case those will be add and sigmoid, and then replaces them in a graph with a different node called fusedop. And what does this fusedop do? Well, inside the fusedop there is actually a subgraph that was taken from the main graph. So in this case, our add and sigmoid nodes still live inside the fusedop but they are not used to actually execute the operations. Instead, they are used to generate the code. The slightly simplified version of the code generated is shown on the slide. Uh, we load input 0, then load input 1, we add them together, then perform sigmoid on the result of that, and ultimately store the output of the sigmoid back to the memory. Once such code is generated, we compile it at runtime with NVRTC in order to get the corresponding executable kernel and then run that instead. And so, as we can imagine, uh, because in our fused kernel we never actually wrote the result of the addition to the main memory, we do get a speed up coming from the eliminated memory passes. So in our example, since the original case had five memory transactions, three loads and two stores, and the end result has only three memory transactions, two loads and one store, we observe 1.6x speedup. The runtime compilation can help solving other problems too. Uh, when we look at the different operations supported by MXNet, there are actually quite a lot of them. And for each of those operations, we have specific kernels that are executed on the GPU. Each such kernel increases both the library size and also the GPU memory usage uh, because for each such kernel, in order for it to be executed on the GPU, it actually needs to be loaded onto the GPU first uh, at the context creation. And since MXNet supports many data types and sometimes even different combinations of them, uh, as is the case, for example, with the NumPy compatible interface, there are actually a lot of kernels for every operation. For example, if we look at the number of kernels just for Volta, which we have in one of the recent MXNet 90 builds, it is actually about 70,000 kernels that are being compiled and that are being loaded every single time to the GPU. And that results in the idle GPU memory consumption, uh, which comes just from the loading of the library and the loading of the kernels to be nearly 1.5 gigabytes of data. However, what we can do is to use RTC to generate those same kernels at runtimes as well. Uh, we introduced two PRs to MXNet 2.0 to use RTC to generate the elementwise, the broadcast and reduction kernels. The elementwise and broadcast PR is merged while the reduction one is currently in review. And with those two PRs, the number of, of kernels that are compiled is dramatically decreased from nearly 70,000 to 40,000 and we also saved about 130 megabytes of the GPU memory. So what can we do in the future with, with those features? Well, combining those two features, uh, the Fusion and the RTC generated kernels is the next logical step and would enable to fuse even more. So let's come back to our example, but this time, instead of the convolution, let's have a batch norm there. And let's assume that we have the RTC enabled version of the batch norm kernel. So what we could do is instead of having only the add and sigmoid be part of the fused op, we could actually embed the subgraph of the fused op in the batch norm operation itself and use the capabilities of the pointwise fusion, specifically the, the code generation capabilities, in order to generate the code of this entire operation uh, to be compiled at runtime. So in the original batch norm kernel, uh, what we would have is we would basically compute some result and, and then store it, right? But with the fusion kernel, what we could do is uh, do the same computation. So have the same core of the kernel, uh, of the batch norm kernel as before, 
uh, in the standalone batch norm, but then on top of that, use the code generated by the fusion together with the batch norm result to get the result of the entire subgraph. This approach also aligns very well with the fusion support that is available in CUDIAN 8 uh, that will be able to do a very similar thing, to fuse the pointwise operations to the convolutions and matrix multi multiplications. So to conclude, runtime compilation or RTC uh, can help to first of all get the better performance by default uh, without the need for custom operations and custom graph passes to be maintained. It also can decrease the library size and decrease the GPU memory consumption. Thank you very much for your attention and have a great rest of the conference. Thank you.